do love us greatly and you sacrificed your son for us. And Lord, I just pray that as we sing these songs that we express our love and our thanks to you for all that you have done and continue to do in our lives each and every day. And so we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you would stand with me.
he was being captive, and uh, but he was so concerned about the home, Jerusalem, about the gates that had fallen, so many things, and he so much wanted to get back and straighten things up, you know. And uh, the church I just finished being an interman in Jack in Edwardsville, Illinois. And when you walked in, there was a lot of rips in the carpet. Things were a mess, and uh, we had a family that had lived too far from here that came and moved into the area. And they came to church one Sunday and they didn't come back. And uh, later on they came back a second time. And uh, when they came back that time they noticed that we were doing a lot of changes. We were ripping up carpet, the people and myself, and we were doing painting and just doing a lot of things. And he said, uh, you know, I have to be honest with you, he said, uh, we just didn't feel like you were taking care of God's house at first. And this is where we want to worship. And this is where God wants us to be. And he said, I'm just so glad now as we're coming back to see how beautiful things are and how things are coming. They joined the church within the next couple of weeks. And then he became a sidekick of mine. We redid every pew, uh, reupholstered every pew, myself and him and two others. And uh, we did fellowship hall, hallways. We just did it all. But I'm going to tell you, you have done a great job here. So I just want to give you an applause, okay? Continue the good work. Now what you got to do is, uh, as COVID gets fast, you need to get the pews filled again, amen? amen? And so we'll look forward to that. And uh, so, uh, you know, one of the things that I have tried to do over the years, I've always thought about trying to have a, a hook uh, to get your attention. And so today is no different. What was that first song you sang of? About amazing love? Amazed. Amazed. And I don't know about you, but I'm amazed that God would love me. How about you? Aren't you amazed that He loves you? You know, I think about my life and uh, where I came from and how I grew up, and, and I think, wow, God, I'm so glad that you chose, you chose by your grace to love me. You chose to take my sins up, upon you and die for my sins. And so as I think about that today, I just want you to know that I am so a Christian. And I, I, I think about what God says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, and verse 8. He said, come, let us reason together. Okay, come, let us reason together, says the Lord. Even though your sins be as scarlet, even though your sins be red, red like crimson, he said, I want us to come and reason together because I can take those sins that are red like scarlet, it's crimson, and I can take them and I can make them white, white as wool. And I think, my goodness, isn't God glorious? Give God a good hand this morning. Praise him. Wow. Absolutely. Now, hey, before you leave, there's something underneath this cloth that I want to give to you. Each and every one of you, I want you to take one of these. I want you to know, now before I did these, I scrubbed my hands really good, all right? So you won't need to worry about getting anything. And uh, so I'll be taking those in the back door with me before we uh, leave today. And I want you to grab one, okay? And I want you to grab it with a smile. And I, I won't tell you anymore. You'll hear about it as we go along. But right now, what I'd like for us to do is go to the Lord in prayer once again. Heavenly Father, you know how much I really enjoy hearing Bill and Gloria and Gaither and, and hearing the group as they sing. But I think of something they said one time. They said, we are at the right place and we are at the right time. They sang that song, Father. And we're, we're meeting in obedience to your word according to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. And Father, I'm so appreciative of all these who are here this morning who are meeting here according to your word because you have told us, dear Father, that we are not to forsake gathering together ourselves for public worship as the manner of some is. And so, Father God, I know that these days are difficult days. I know these are days of stress, Father. These are days of sickness. And, and Father, I know there needs to be days of wholeness and wellness. And so I pray, dear Father God, that as we come, we can come as your people, Father, excited to be in your house, enthusiastic about being here, and I'm hungry to hear your word this morning, ready to hear something new, something different, dear Father, that can just cause us to, to walk by faith and not by sight. 
that will just help us, dear Father, to pull up our bootstraps, as it were, and walk with you even though things are sometimes tough and rough. Father, I'm just praying for your blessing of your Holy Spirit today upon this message. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, uh, this morning, I, I want to ask you a question as we start out. How many of you have ever heard the phrase, you need to chill out? Anyone? Have you heard that phrase, you need to chill out? And I am sure there's wives here, husbands here, who have looked at their spouse and wanted to say, chill out. But maybe you didn't say it, but you were thinking it, you know. And so I want to talk a little bit this morning about chilling out. And what's that word means? It means to, it means to calm down, relax, breathe. Okay? And so we're going to be talking about those things because I think it's time that you and I took a chill pill. Okay? When we sing songs like we've just been singing this morning, when you and I think about the greatness of our God that we serve and love and His faithfulness to us, we need to take a chill pill. We need to calm down, cool down. We need to come to realize in our lives that God is bigger Bigger than anything that's going to come against us. He's bigger than the problems that you can have in the marriage, even in older age. Now, how can I say that? I can say that because I, I left an intern not too long ago, and I, <laughs> and I had this one little, uh, older lady come in that Sunday. Uh, her gentleman, her man, wasn't there with her. And uh, I, I had said to her, I said, so where's so-and-so today? Oh, he's at home pouting. <laughs> and I'm going, aren't you guys getting too old for that? And then I was like, are you it? <laughs> and I'm going, uh-oh, okay, we'll forget that idea. And, but, you know, it, it hits us sometimes, but God is bigger. He's bigger than our words. How many of you worry? Now, be honest. No, we do worry. But is God bigger than the words that we have? Is God bigger than the depression that we fall into? Did you know that many students today in college are facing depression because of this COVID, because of what's on us, this pandemic? I, my wife, I, I was trying to get ready to come to worship today, and my wife yelled at me. She yelled, Ed, hey, Ed, you got to get in here. So I come out, and I must say to you, I was just getting ready to get in the shop, okay? And so I come up, I know you didn't need to hear that, but anyway, I come out, and I said, what is this? She said, you've got to watch this on TV. And here with this, this couple, he was like 85, and she was like 83, and they were just dancing to the, to, to the tunes. Because their daughter had come to them and said, we know that you've been really depressed, so I brought some music for you. Some of the old music. And she began to play it, and this couple began to dance. Well, I tell you, God is bigger. He's bigger than the worries that we have. He's bigger than the... How many of you... I know you probably don't say it. How many of you act like you hate people sometimes, you know? I, I don't, I'm not going to say I hate I just don't like them. Have you been there? Sure you have. Give people a cross look. Oh, you don't even look at them. You know, you just, yeah, God is bigger than those feelings that you have inside of you. God is bigger than your anxiety, your fears. He's bigger than your circumstance. Uh, I like what the book of the Ephesians, by the way, I want to say this to you, your outlines. Hold up your outlines for just a second, if you would, please. Thank you. Here's the offer I want to make. I want to make you an offer today. You cannot refuse. Well, maybe you can but here's the offer. I am one who prepares in advance for what we're going to be doing. I already have prepared next week where we're going, okay? And uh, if you would like to have your outline one week in advance, so that you can look up the scriptures before you come and already have them in your mind, I'm more than glad to give Harriet the outline early in advance, okay? And that way when you come, like, say, next week, you'll get two outlines. You get the outline for the following week and the outline for today. So you let us know. Right? You let us know if that's what you want, okay? I can't read your mind. But in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, I love this verse. 
For God is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine. According to his power that is at work within us. Do we believe that? Do we believe that God is bigger than any circumstance we face? Do we believe that God is so big that he has the power to do more than we could ever imagine? Now, having said that, I've got to take you back now. You need to understand that my IQ level is not the highest in the world. Okay? And so, therefore, it's very simple for me to pick up a children's book and enjoy it. All right? It's right on my level. And I think about a, a writer of children's books. His name is Robert Wells. Have you ever heard of him? Robert Wells has written a children's book entitled, <clears throat> Is a Blue Whale the Biggest Thing There Is? I tried to order that this week at the library to have it here today to show you, but they couldn't get it any quick enough because of the pandemic. But in this book, he wants children to understand just how big the universe is. And so I'm going to share some things with you. First of all, he comments that the largest animal on earth is the blue whale. He says just the flippers on his tails are bigger than most animals on this earth. But friends, I want to say to you this morning that that big blue well <laughs> is nearly as big as a mountain. Are you with me? Stay with me as I give you these. If you could put 100 blue wells inside of a huge jar, you could put millions of those well jars inside of a hollowed out Mount Everest. Really? But Mount Everest isn't anywhere near as big as the Earth. If you were to stack 100 Mount Everest, one on top of the other, it would be just a whisker on the face of planet Earth. And yet the Earth isn't anywhere nearly as big as the Sun. You could fit one million Earths inside the Sun. I don't know what you, but that kind of blows my mind. And yet the sun isn't nearly as big as that red super giant star called Antares. You could fit, you could fit 50 million of our suns inside, inside that one super giant star called Antares. Wow. And yet, that super red star, Antares, isn't anywhere nearly as big as the Milky Way galaxy. Billions of stars, including superstars like Antares, make up the Milky Way galaxy. Continue staying with me. But the Milky Way galaxy isn't nearly as big as the universe. There are billions of other galaxies within the universe, yet filled with billions of galaxies. The universe almost appears to be empty. Wow. The distance from one galaxy to another is beyond human calculation. Yet, we are told in the scriptures that the one who spoke it all into being, who created it all, is none other than God our Heavenly Father. It is by His now that these things came into being. Wow. Talk about the greatness of the Heavenly Father who forgave you of all your sins and who has appointed you a place in heaven. To him be the glory and the honor. I want you to take your Bibles. I want you to turn with me, if you would please, to Psalms. Psalms 139. Now hang on to your seats. I'm about to read to you 18 verses. Oh my goodness. Now, don't take, a, don't take a nap while I'm reading, please, because you're going to want to hear all these scriptures. Psalms 139. Oh, Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out, my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, <laughs> you know it completely, oh, Lord. You hem me in behind and before... You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If 
I go up in the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the night and the light will become the night around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to me. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Wow. Let me show to you now four truths this morning. And as I do so, I want it to come into your mind that God is greater than, greater than any circumstance, anything that comes against you. First of all, God is omniscient. God is omniscient. That word omniscient comes from the Latin word omni, which means all. And the Latin word scientia, which means to know. God is all knowing. Think about it. God knows everything about everything all the time. All the time. 1 John 3.20 declares, for God is greater than our hearts, and He knows everything. <sighs> so the next time something enters your mind that should not be there, and you know it, guess who else knows it? God the Father. Psalms 147, 4 and 5 says, God determines the number of the stars, and He calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limits. Wow. Daniel chapter 2. Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are His. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with Him. God is all-knowing. And let me say this to you. God's knowledge of you and I is personal. It's personal. A, He knows what you are. He knows what you are. Psalms 139 verse 1 said, O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. Now that word search in the Hebrew, it means to dig. It means to pierce through. And so God looks into the very depths of my being and he knows who I am and what I am. He has x-ray vision that can pierce the hardest heart. <laughs> I had a farmer one time. I was out in Centurion as a, a young pastor. Uh, I was going to seminary at the time. And uh, I had came to this farmer and I said to him, I need to talk to you about Jesus. I need to talk to you about your the sins in your life and how Christ wants to forgive you for those sins. And he looked at me square in the eye. Square in the eye and says, What are you talking about? I've never sinned. <laughs> what? <laughs> Threw me off guard. And somehow I had to get it lost. I had to get it lost enough for or I could get it saved, you know? Oh my goodness. But God knows us on a personal level. Uh, all the way down deep. He knows where I'm dirty. He knows where I'm clean. He knows where I'm right and where I'm wrong. He knows where I'm good and he knows when I'm bad. That's the kind of God that we have. And by the way, next part, God knows, he knows what you think. Wow. You know, when Jesus was speaking one day, he says, you know, y'all want to talk about adultery and fornication, I'm telling you right now, you even look at a woman with lust in your heart, one of you are right there, you were right there. Wow. So he reads. He reads our minds. He reads our thoughts. Wow. My goodness. Psalms 
139 verse 2 says, You know when I sit down and when I rise up, and you understand my thoughts from afar. In other words, nothing about me gets past you, O oh God. <laughs> my thoughts are like a sign in flashing neon <laughs> before God the Father. He knows what I, He not only knows what I think, He knows what I'm going to think. He knows it all. And see, he knows where you go. He knows where you go. I remember when my son-in-law was dating my daughter, and uh, we were talking one time, and of course, uh, he came in the middle of the day in my basement, and I had a pool table down there, and he and I were going to play pool together, and he said, I need to talk to you about my salvation. And it was that day that he made a decision, but as time went along, he was frequenting a place that I felt he should not be going to. And uh, I, I visited him about that. He chose to no longer go there. But I told him, I said, you're an ambassador for Christ. You're a witness to everyone. And by the way, God sees where you go. He sees where you go. Verse 3 of 139, you discern my going out and my coming in. You are familiar with all my ways. So whether I lie down <coughs> or sit or stand, God sees, God knows. <coughs> he knows when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He sees where you go. He knows everything about you. I like Proverbs 15, verse 3. The eyes of the Lord are everywhere. Keep watch on the wicked and the good. Kind of reminds me about moms, you know. Mom, moms have four eyes. You all know that, don't you? They can see everything in front of them. They can see what's going on behind them. But Dad, you and I are oblivious to a lot of that. We just don't see everything. But God sees everything there is. And by the way, D, He knows what you say. He knows what you say. That's D. Verse 4 says, Even before there's a word on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it completely. God knows our hearts. Verses 5 and 6 says, You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. And here's the next part, E. He knows how you feel. When you're troubled, God knows it. When you're hurting, God knows it. When you are at that point in your life, where you just simply cannot handle another storm. God knows it. And He wants you to express and share and open up to Him about what you're going through because God understands your feelings. Now, here's the second truth. God is not only omniscient, God is omnipresent. God is omnipresent, which simply means that God is always with you. He's right there beside you. Verse 7, the psalmist said, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? And the answer to that question is, Nowhere. <laughs> I remember laying in bed one night in the darkness. And I was troubled. And guess what? God was right there with me. God was there with me. Where can you go? Nowhere to get from his presence. A, death cannot take you away from the presence of God. When you go to the grave, God is there waiting for you, and what's he going to do? He's going to take us on to heaven. This week, I got a phone call the other day from a lady in Edgersville, and she said, Pastor, I hate to bother you, but she said, and I said, you are never a bother. It's whatever, what do you need? I'm here for you. And she said, well, mom has now been told that she now has cancer. Mom is in her 90s. Mom has been given a short time on this earth. And an individual said, Pastor Ed, is there any way you would drive to Edwardsville and sit with mom? We don't know. We can't. I just can't find within me to ask her what she wants in terms of burial or cremation. So on Tuesday, that's where I will be on that day. But the good news is, 
the good news is, is that God is with her right now, and he'll be with her even when she goes to the grave, because he's going to take her by the hand and take her to glory. Praise God. And be distance. Distance cannot take you away from the presence of God. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, the scripture says, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Now, if I were to fly like a bird or swim like a dolphin, guess what? Distance cannot keep me away from God. He's right there at that given time. And see, darkness cannot take me. Darkness cannot take you away from the presence of God. Uh, when I said to you that God has an extra vision. Well, let me tell you, he has an infrared vision too. He has an infrared. I was watching a show the other day and these guys had these goggles on, you know. They could see in the dark. God doesn't need them. He can see it all. I can't tell you how many times after I got saved at the age of 18 and uh, I thought I was going to do some things in the dark and I'm going, oh my goodness. <laughs> I can't hide from God. He, he sees it all. Nothing is past him. The scripture says in Psalms 139.11 If I say surely the darkness will hide me and the light Comes the night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is a light unto you. So God is omnipresent. God is also, this is the third point, God is omnipotent. Now that word omnipotent, remember, omni means what? All. Potent means powerful. Woo, that has a powerful smell. It's potent. So that's kind of where we get that idea. All powerful, omnipotent, omnipotent. Now, there's nothing that God can not do. I like what the psalmist does now. In that passage, he begins to take a look at his body. And he begins to say, wow. <laughs> and he begins to say, you know what? I am not here by evolution. I'm not here. By, by chance. I have been created by the very power of God and I am His workmanship to serve Him and to love Him. And here is my final thought I want to give you this morning. And this is where this is going to come into play. Okay? So hang on to your seats. God is greater than. That's where we started. I believe that God is greater than the loneliness that we can feel greater than the discouragement, the depression, the disappointment, greater than the temptations that we face, greater than an unwelcome guest, a circumstance that comes into our lives, greater than an upsetting trial, an undesired loss, greater is he, is he that's in you than he that's in the world. God is greater than. Now, please understand this. Because God is omniscient, which means he's all-knowing, there's nothing that pertains to your life that gets past God. We need to remember that. And that will help you to chill out. That will help you to calm down. Because God is omnipresent, which means He's always with you. You're never out of touch. He's with you every moment of the day. So, hey, listen. Calm down. Take a chill pill. Because God right there with you. Because God is omnipotent. He's all powerful. There's not anything that God cannot help you get through. You understand that? God is greater than. Now, <clears throat> if you believe as I do that God is greater than anything that comes, then you and I have no reason then to blow our top. You and I have no reason then to embarrass ourselves. You and I have no reason then to worry, fret, and get anxious if we truly believe that God is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. The scripture is clear. If God can be for us, who can be against us? We are more than conquerors through him who love us. So the next time, you're all frustrated. The next time
takes time. You're crying and you're hurting. And big people cry. And big people get hurt. The next time, you get angry. And that happens. I don't think about the scriptures. Peter, yes, he, he was a sinner and became a saint. But he did not always act like a saint. You understand that? And Jesus said to him one day, he said, you know, Peter, I'm sorry to say this to you, but you're going to fail. You're going to stumble. You're going to fall. But after you've gotten back up, I want you to go back and strengthen the brother. So God knows Christians are going to face some tough times. And when we face those times, we need to chill out, cool down, take a chill pill, because God says, I am here with you. And that's why today, that's why I brought some chill pills. Yes. I made these little packets up for you today. Yeah. And uh, this is some chill pill. And what do I have on the other side? I have those little jelly bellies. Is that what they are? Jelly bellies? I couldn't remember what I bought. <laughs> and I just put a few in there. And the reason I did this is because of this reason. When you take one of those as kind of a, a point of humor, I want you to taste the sweetness. And when you do, I want you to remember to do what the scripture says. The scripture says, taste. Taste and see that the Lord is good. He loves you. He forgave you for your sins. He took your sins and were red like scarlet. And he made you like wool. He took those sins of yours, according to Psalms 103, verse 12, and he removed those sins from you as far as the east is from the west. Never, never to be remembered again. I came to you and said to you how great God is. I illustrated that through the universe, through creation. God is greater than anything. And if God could just speak all this into being, don't you think he could speak light into your darkness? Can't God speak hope into your marriage and into your life, into your failings? Can't He speak power into you? I don't know if this message is for you today. It may be for someone though that you know. Are you with me? And so as you reread the scriptures with your outline and take them into your heart, then you begin to pray, God, God, I'm asking you right now this morning, to help me to always remember that you are greater than anything that comes against me. God, I've got children. God, I've got friends and loved ones. I've got people who are being touched by this pandemic around me. And I need to speak hope into their lives. And you are our hope. You are our anchor that holds steadfast and sure when the bills roll. God, touch me with your power and your presence and your knowledge of me. But God, help me then to touch a life of someone this week as I'm your ambassador. Help me to touch my husband, my, my wife. Help me to touch my children, my grandchildren. Help me to touch that mission field where you have placed me, wherever that might be. It might just be at a local grocery store, at a local gas station. We don't know. It may be someone who is facing a calamity in their life, and they share that with you. And then all of a sudden you pause and say, you know, I want to, if it's all right with you, I'd like to take this to God in prayer for you. Because I believe that God has the power to help this to change for you. Don't let church just be church. Are you with me? Let's make this time a time when God's able to grant us. Would you stand with me as Randy goes to the piano and we prepare to sing and close the song. Brother Randy, what are you two leading us in for the song? We're going to sing God is So Good, 193.
bow your head and speak to the Lord. And let him speak to you by his spirit. Place. And may what we leave, may we say to those we know and love.